All right, so what I'd like to do here is show you some of the features inside of my Stat Lab. So once you log in, you'll see some links on the left-hand side here. This is where all your courses appear. Um, if you're enrolled in other courses, maybe in Psych or Chem or something like that, those would show up here as well if you use uh, Pearson my, my, my Whatever Lab. But for this, it's called My Stat Lab. So I'm going to click on the Math 102 link. Um, this is uh, Math 102 OLF for the online class. Doing this will get you into the My Math Lab home screen. Um, you see, when it logs in, you, you, know, you can see the home screen here. There's a bunch of links on the left-hand side here. That's how you navigate. There's a timeline up top here. Um, you can see there's a couple things that I posted today. Um, a blue dot up here in the calendar. Um, this is a homework. And the, the uh, gold triangle there, that's a quiz. And you know later on, you can see they're, they're posted there. And if I click to the right, yeah, over here on the 26th, you can see there's a little clock next to them. That just means that they're due. There's also upcoming assignments that are due in here and, you know, how, when things are due. This is like your performance in the course, you know, what percent you finished. There's a few things over here that come from the publisher. Um, a browser check to see if your computer's up to date. So if you click that and you can check out, you know, if your uh, flash is outdated or what have you. Um, the, the textbook appendices. There's a nice video right here on how to enter answers. You may want to check that out. Um, it, what it'll do is it'll run through and show you, you know, when you're working in your homework, you know, how you go about putting answers into the system. There's a learning curve associated with, with, with uh, doing online homework. So you just have to get used to it. All right, so this is the home screen. So you can see the, um, the big, probably one of the most popular things that you're going to look at is your ebook. Um, so here's the ebook right there, this link on the left here. The link above this says chapter contents. What that does, it does is it groups a bunch of these things by chapter and pops it in here. And, you know, it arranges by chapter. And you can see, um, you know, whether the homework and additional resources and quizzes or what have you, you know, by chapter. But one of the most popular things you're going to do is, you, you know, when you want to start, you know, learning statistics online especially, is you're going to want to look at the book and read those chapters. So if I click on this ebook link, it brings up this link right here. What it does is it opens it up in another window, depending on how you have your browser set up. It's pretty straightforward. The, um, the link opens up, and, you know, this is the exact textbook that you would buy in a bookstore. But, uh, you know, buying the online system with my math lab, you get the book in there so you don't have to purchase the hard copy textbook. So here I am in the, um, in the chat, uh, the table of contents, as you can see. There's a menu bar over here on the left. And any one of these little triangles can be expanded if you want to jump to, say, whatever, you know, a particular section in the book and start reading about that section. Uh, pretty easy to navigate. You could print pages. Um, you can't print the whole book. It, they, you know, it doesn't allow you to do that. So if you're on a particular page, there's um, a full screen option up here for a projector. And of course, you could you know, print if you'd like. All right, so I'm going to go back over here now. So uh, what other things are you going to visit a lot? I would say you're going to visit this additional resources tab. This additional resources tab, it has a bunch of data sets. So if I go back to the textbook, um, every data set that's in the textbook, if you need to enter it into your calculator, or into Microsoft Excel, um, we've typed it for you, so you don't have to sit there and type it. You know, some data sets are very large. You might be working with a data set that has 50 pieces of data in it, and to have to type those 50 pieces of data, it takes time. Um, you know, that's already done for you, and you could, you know, click on data sets here. It's all organized by chapter. So say I go to chapter two, and you can see question number 20, question number 21, question 39, and as you can see, there's two different files. 8xi and CSV. CSV will open up a Microsoft Excel. It's called comma separated values. And then the 8x means the TI-83 or TI-84. So it'll open up if you uh, decide to load that into your calculator with the cord that comes with your calculator. Formula sheets, statistical tables. You can use this thing a lot right here starting in chapter 7 or 8. Um, this, this is a, um, a PDF that just came, contains all the statistical tables that are in the back of the textbook. Um, they're also in the textbook. Um, if you purchase a hard copy textbook, which I don't recommend because it's expensive, um, you know, it's in there as well. But these tables here, you could print these, and it's not this page. You can see this is 13 pages. You're going to use this a lot because you're going to need it. Um, what else? Uh, additional case studies. We have case studies all throughout the textbook. And what it does is it helps your understanding of a particular topic. Uh, graphing calculator tutorials. So um, these tutorials are videos. When you click on them, 
has some standard things to do in the calculator. Um, a lot of the calculator stuff I create my own videos for because uh, you know the, the, I want you to learn specific topics or specific applications to certain types of questions. These are some general uh, topics here like on how to put data in your calculator and how to get quick stats out of it and maybe how to build a bar graph or what have you. Uh, besides that, there are there's a, a manual for the calculator that we've created. So there's calculator tutorials and then this manual here is a PDF. It's fairly large. You don't want to print this thing. Uh, you can see it's 46 pages, but literally it has every single statistical thing that you would do on our TI-83-84 calculator. The TI-83 and 84 calculator are the same calculator. It's just that one's a little bit faster than the other one. Um, you know, what, the, the TI-83 is cheaper, so I would recommend getting that one if you don't have one. Uh, but you can see, like, step by step with screenshots, everything that you'll, you'll need to know how to do on your calculator will be in this manual right here. And, you know, I'm going to also create videos that show you how to do certain things in real time, so this way you could follow along with that as well. Um, the pencast section is being developed still, so there's nothing in there. But there's a, bu a bunch of things in here, as you can see, that, that you're going to be using. Um, there's some solutions. So I see selected solutions right here. These are solutions uh, that have both video solutions and um, PDF solutions. So you can see there's videos, there's solutions to textbook questions, and then there's answers to certain problems in a textbook that we call theme questions. Um, here's where you'll click this do it to go to your homework. Now, I don't remember if I assigned the homework yet. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. So I assigned homework number one already in chapter one. Um, it's real straightforward. You click on this link, and you can see if your first homework assignment has 10 questions. It shows how many points you've accumulated uh, out of each question here. You see, I, I, you know, I haven't done the, 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 the homework myself, but if I click on a particular question, it loads. You need Flash for this. This is why your Flash needs to be updated. So what happens is it's a question. This one's not very mathematical, I don't believe. There's no special math to do here. It's like kind of like a definition almost or a concept. But what the nice thing about my math lab is, you know, you read this question and, you know, you're graded on this. And usually I give, you know, four to five chances per, pro per you know, problem. So if you get this thing wrong, you can try it again. But, you know, a lot of the times you'll want to, you know, get your feet wet first. So what we have over here on the right are all these ancillaries. So this first one, I don't really, I'm not a big fan of this one. Help me solve this. This helps you solve this particular question. And then at that point, you know, it just marks you wrong for it and gives you another one. So if you ask me the smartest thing to do would first be to read about it in the textbook. Like if I click this little link right here that says textbook, what it does is it opens up in the textbook, you know, where this particular question is which is very valuable, obviously. So you read this, you know, you've read, you know, say you've read chapter one already, and then you go to attempt the homework and you read about this homework question and you're kind of unsure on how to do it. So what you do is you click this, you know, textbook link here and the textbook opens up to right where it's at. Uh, and then you can read about it, obviously. Uh, so that's one of the ancillaries. Another ancillary you can use all the time is view an example. So what the view an example does, it grabs a question that's just like this one and kind of holds your hand through it. Usually somewhere between three and I don't even know, sometimes upwards of 10 steps it could be, you know, depending on how involved the question is. So you can see this is a short one, three parts remaining. So what they do is they define what, you know, the special terms that are in the question and then they run through the problem and show you how to do it. Very powerful, obviously. Uh, you're probably going to use this view and example scenario a lot. To help me solve this is exactly like it. But what it does, if you decide to choose that, is it gives you the answer to the question you're working on, and then obviously it's going to mark you wrong for that one. It's kind of like you giving up saying, all right, just show me how to do this question. It's too difficult or what have you. Use the view and example option. If all else fails, you can ask my instructor. If you click that, what it does um, is it'll show me all the things you've done with the question. It'll give me a link and an email, and I'll be able to look at what you did. And a lot of the times when you're really confused and you, know, you get the thing wrong a bunch of times in a row, it shows me the answers that you've put down, and then I could uh, kind of see what you did and then um, give you some recommendations on you know what you're doing incorrectly or what have you. Um, and obviously, there's a print button here, so you can print this, because a lot of people don't like to do mathematics questions on a computer like this, because there's no way for you to write in this space right here. Um, but if you print this thing, then you can write it down and use it to study with later. You can always revisit this homework at any point in time. So, um, you know, you, you don't really need to print any of the stuff if you ask me. I'm going to leave this. All right, so that's homework. Uh, quizzes and tests is here. You click this thing, and it's very, very similar. Um, I have a quiz up there on your syllabus material for the online class. So when you, once you've read through the, the um, Start Here menu in uh, Blackboard, um, and you've read the syllabus, you can take this quick quiz. 
it's an easy hundred. You're just gonna go grab your first um, hundred on this thing. You can see um, you get two hours for this and a zero of five attempts. I'm giving five attempts on this quiz. Um, I say every quiz I assign, I give two attempts on every single one. Um, so you take it, you don't like your grade on it, um, you review what you did wrong, and then you can retake it again. Uh, homework are graded. Uh, usually I give five uh, chances at every homework question. Um, most students, honestly, their homework average is in the 90s, their quiz average is in the, in the 80s or 90s. Um, those are gimmies. You're going you're gonna to grab those points and run. All right, so what else is there? There's a study plan, as you can see. Now, the study plan comes from the same batch of questions that the homework and quizzes come from. Um, you know, the homework and quizzes come from a, a pool of questions. You know, there's thousands of questions in there. The, the, the study plan are the same thing. So if I click on study plan, um, you can see, let's see, I want to look at view all chapters. And say, you know, we're working in whatever, chapter 2 or something like that, and you want to see chapter section 2.4, and you click on section 2.4. As you can see, it's ridiculous, the number of questions in each section. And this is what I mean, where there's so much for you to do here. Now, what this does is it'll, it'll keep track of what you do. So say you decide, no, I'm going to grab this question here and you know, let me try some, some questions in here. And, you, it, you know, the, the questions are coming from the same pool of questions that the homework and quizzes come from. So this would be a good way to get your feet wet. So what happens here is you work on these problems. You can see the same ancillaries. Everything's all there. It'll grade you. It, 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 the grade doesn't count on your average in the course, but it still grades you to let you know, you know how you're performing. So you, I, what I use, uh, recommend my students that use a study plan um, if you, know, you want to get your feet wet before you dive into the homework questions. Uh, you know, because the homework questions are graded. So it's, you know, you don't want to just start guessing, obviously. And being that these questions here are pulled from the same batch of questions that your homeworks and quizzes are pulled from, this is a great place to start to get your feet wet. A uh, grade book that's pretty obvious. Um, I don't have any grades, as you can see in here, but eventually this will be uh, filled. Um, boy, I don't even know how many grades that you can have in this course. Um, there's probably about 15 homeworks. Um, eight or ten quizzes, three do-at-home tests, a face-to-face -face midterm, and a face-to-face -face final. Yeah, you're having like 25, 30 grades in this class. This is going to be populated with a ton of grades, so you'll be fine there. The multimedia library, it's just, it's just a place that puts a lot of the stuff. It puts like homeworks, quizzes, videos, solutions to problems, puts it all in one spot for you. Um, one other spot you're going to need is uh, the course tools. So if you click on course tools, now these things with the little student with the slash through it, you're not going to see that. This is because I'm logged in as me, as instructor, so you won't see this stuff here. But you can see there's a document sharing section. Um, all your documents really are put in Blackboard. Um, this is for, you know, when I, when I teach face-to-face, -face, I put all my handouts here. So you won't see anything in here, really. Um, all your documents will be in Blackboard. Uh, the email feature, uh, you don't need to use this I either um, because the um, email, remember, is all in Blackboard. So I want you to use Blackboard email only because this way it keeps a record of all of our discussions that we have. Uh, is there anything else here? I don't think so. This um, chat in class live, that's for online office hours, but my office hours, we're going to do those. Uh, scheduled, so uh, in, in my office and, and on the phone. Uh, if I go back to main menu, I think I talked about all these. Oh, StatCrunch. StatCrunch is a um, statistical software package that they gave us, you know, the, the publisher for free. Um, I don't use it for the online class. Um, instead, we're going to use the TI-83 graphing calculator. Um, I just like it better. Um, it's a little easier, and plus it's portable. I think that's about it. There's some other things in here that we're not going to make use of. There's so many features. I mean, you really have to start playing around with this yourself to get your feet wet. It's um, it's an enormous amount of material. Um, the best thing for you to do is spend some time on the site. Email me with any questions that you have. I'll be happy to answer any. Uh, if you have any questions, shoot me an email. Thanks for watching.